Good evening. God's richest blessings to you on this glorious day the Lord has given us. Let us rejoice and give him thanks. It really was a glorious day in the Lord. It's hard to believe it's December. It really didn't feel like Advent midweek one today, but you know what? We'll take it as long as we can. Uh, Steve and I were talking in the back. We made all these plans for all these services for Christmas, and that's when it'll dump, you know? So, but I love snow. That'll be good, too. It's not a hard commute for me to get here, so whatever. But uh, it's great to be here in the Lord on our first Advent midweek service where we are going to focus the next three weeks on stop, look, and listen. So you'll learn more about that in just a little bit. Just a couple of quick announcements, though. The Giving Tree, you guys did fantastic. Thanks be to God. You're so generous. Uh, We would ask, uh, though, they want to get all the presents back by Sunday so they can have them out of the way before the children's uh, Christmas program, which is a week from Sunday. So, uh, so the, that's two announcements. Please bring your gifts back by Sunday, the 10th, so that you, they're out of the way for the Christmas program, which you can attend on the 17th. So we'll be glad to have that. We are arra- rearranging our um, uh, communion schedule a little bit because of the program and because of Christmas. We're going to move communion from the third Sunday to the fourth. So just that way we have it... Um, for Christmas Eve Eve and Christmas Eve and all that good stuff. So just so you know, so you can kind of make that plan. Uh, also, in the, I think in the newsletter on the calendar, it said the Changs were going to be on the 21st. It's actually the 22nd. So mark your calendars. The Changs will be at the Art Center at 7, 7 p.m.? 7 p.m. 6.30 p.m. Just listen to what Angie says, not what I say. So, on the 22nd, that much I know. So, please uh, mark that on your calendar as well. What a great way to usher in that, that Christmas weekend. Is that fantastic concert, and then we'll get to go in and the wonderful services on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Uh, so, what a, what a great way to start the weekend. So, uh, I don't think I have any other announcements to make, do I? Poinsettias, don't forget to sign up for the poinsettias. Yes? Okay. So, rustle the bushes, bring folks in. We'll make some Christmas and figure out what Christmas even are. I know a lot of people probably don't even know what that is. So you can see a sampling of Christmas on the little tree on the giving tree. So um, those are Christmas. Any other announcements tonight? <laughs> what? Okay. Oh, yes, next Thursday, not this Thursday, the next Thursday at 7 p.m.? Yes, Yes. Madison Band Concert. We have bandies now. So if you want to come and listen to the little drummer boy, (laughs) pa-rumpa-pum-pum. So you shouldn't be embarrassed by that. That's awesome, man. So... (laughs) You don't get embarrassed, please. Uh, any, <laughs> any other announcements than what Dylan's got? <laughs> okay, hearing none. God's blessings on your worship this evening.
Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. As the Lord invites us to repentance, peace, and forgiveness, let us come before his throne boldly confessing our sin and unburdening our hearts. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and weighed down, and I will give you rest. O oh, most merciful God, God hears your confession and knows your struggle. Therefore, he sent his only begotten son into the world to secure forgiveness. This is the true Christmas gift that God shares with us and that we ought to share with one another. God in Christ Jesus grants us his joy, peace, and grace. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of the word, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of peace, you sent your only begotten Son into the world that we might be rescued from sin. Rejoicing in the assurance that comes with a forgiven heart, intervene in our lives repeatedly that we may stop sinning and lead us to purity of heart, that your name may be glorified in our lives. Through your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
Testament reading for this evening is taken from Isaiah chapter 1. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. Children have I reared and brought up, but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows its owner, and the donkey its master's crib. But Israel does not know, my people do not understand. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, offspring of evildoers, children who deal corruptly. They have forsaken the Lord, they have despised the Holy One of Israel. They are utterly estranged. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, remove the evil of your deeds from before my eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do good. Seek justice, correct oppression, bring justice to the fatherless, plead the widow's cause. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be eaten by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From Galatians chapter 5. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something... When he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father Jacob, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who, is, who was also called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. I'd like to invite all the children who are here this evening to come forward for our children's message. Come on up. Come on up, man. <laughs> Give smarties, that's right. It's a good reason to come up. Whoa. Come on up, Otto. Come on, buddy. Come on. <laughs> well, it's good to see you guys tonight. I'm so glad you're here. It's wonderful to have you. And on this very special night when we celebrate our first Wednesday in Advent, our first midweek service. And so it's great to be here. And tonight we're going to talk about the word stop. 
We're going to do stop, look, and listen. So usually when you hear the word stop, what do you, what do you think of? Stop in, the name of the law. stop in the name of the law. Okay, very good. <laughs> what? Keep going? <laughs> Freeze. Uh, what's that? Freeze. Freeze. Yeah, stop, right? Okay, yeah, stop. Not keep going, but don't do what you're currently doing, right? Knock it off. That's what the prophet is telling the people of Israel. He's saying, knock it off. What you're doing is not the way to do things. Now, we're going to talk a a little bit more about that tonight. But tonight, Theo, come on now. When we're talking about stop, remember, stop means stop. It means when the Lord tells us you shall, you should, and when you shouldn't, what should we do? We shouldn't. That's literally stop in the name of the law. That's right. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. God's blessings to you guys. I have some devotionals for you. So I want you to take one of these, and if you can hand hand those out, and here are the Smarties. (laughs) I don't need Smarties. And you take one? And you take Smarties? Yes. And I have a few more copies. If you didn't get one of these when you came in, we're out in the back, but there's a few more copies up here. Just let me know and we'll have you grab one. We continue now with our sermon hymn.
Grace, peace, and mercy be unto you from God our Heavenly Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So I asked the kids, when you hear the word stop, what do you think of? The contrarian Elsa says, keep doing something. I bet your teachers believe that one, right? Stop in the name of the law, right? You know, knock it off. But if I looked at you tonight and I said, stop, what comes to mind? Be honest. What? Stop. Hammer time. Right? You should see me in my... No, you shouldn't. Anyway. I was never much of a hammer time kind of fella, but... Right? Stop it. Or, if you're around 1990, you might think, stop. Oh, that's older. You went back to the 60s. <laughs> Woo! Stop in the name of love. Before you break my heart, think it all over, right? I'm Tommy James, not the Shondells. No, if you're from 1990, you might think, stop, collaborate and listen, right? Because you're vanilla ice. Oh, some of you are like, nope, ice, ice, baby, dun, 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 dun. Totally stole it from Queen, but whatever. But tonight we hear stop in a whole different sense. So we're going to think about a different song tonight. This song comes from, oh, the mid-90s, I suppose. And it's one of those songs that you get stuck in your head because your children listen to it over and over and over and over. This one, my children were big fans of Richard Scarry's Busy Town. You remember Richard Scarry's Busy Town? Had all the animals. They all lived in a town together peacefully. They had, you had Abel Baker Charlie and, you know, all these guys. They were fantastic. I actually liked Richard Scarry's Busy Town. But they had uh, uh, a few episodes. It was Play It Safe. And this one was about crossing the street. And you had the little mouse, he was, had his newspaper, and he's walking along, and he's about getting run over, and he runs into a, a mailbox, and the song is, stop, look, and listen, you don't know what you're missing, right? Be smart and start to stop, look, and listen. Pay attention when you're walking across the street or down the sidewalk lest you fall into all sorts of trouble. And then you have kind of this Mr. Magoo sort of uh, where he goes through a construction site and almost falls in a manhole and all of these things. And when I hear Isaiah chapter 1, starting at verse 2, I can't help but think of stop, look, and listen. You don't know what you're missing. Isaiah is talking to a people who have not stopped, not looked, not listened. They have only thought about themselves. The Israelites have rejected their God in pursuit of all of the things of the world, so they are blinded from what is real, what is true, what is good, and they are just chasing after all the worldly pursuits that they can possibly get a hold of. And so Isaiah says to them, <clears throat> cease to do evil. Stop. You have to stop doing evil. Now he doesn't say it to the world. They don't get that. But he says it to a people who have been given the word of the Lord. Stop. Cease to do evil evil. There is no good in it. Paul illustrates this very well in our text from Galatians. He says, now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dis dis dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and these and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, people who have heard the word of the Lord, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of 
God. Stop. Stop doing these things which draw your heart and your mind away from the Lord. Stop acting like you are in control of your own world. There is no such thing, brothers and sisters in Christ, there is no such thing as your truth. There is no such thing as living your best life. These are common phrases today, right? It's just a new play on, you know, back in the early 2000s, it was YOLO, right? You only live once. Now it's, oh, I'm living my best life, right? No. Your life is not your own. You have been bought with a price, the price of the Savior, the price of the Son of God, who literally gave up his life Who stopped living so you could live? So God, through the prophet Isaiah, says, stop doing evil. Paul says, stop doing these things that are worldly because all they do is draw your heart and your mind away from the truth of God. Stop engaging in all of these things. He even gives a warning. And if you're going out to try to help your brother get out of these situations, be careful lest you fall into the same trap. Now, if I, or if I, if if Isaiah would have stopped there, this would be a really good law sermon. One of those where you just kind of get kicked in the gut a little bit. You know? But we're good Lutherans. We don't want to stop there. Because quite honestly, if we stop there, we would be missing the best part. Isaiah says, stop doing evil. Learn to do good. Learn to do good. He knows the Lord does. He knows the Lord does that we can't do it perfectly. It just can't happen. As hard as we might try to make perfect decisions each and every day, it just doesn't work. But how do we learn to do good? He goes on, seek justice, correct oppression, bring justice to the fatherless, plead the widow's cause. You see, this was what the, the leadership... And, and, and the, 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 the well-to-do, the powerful in Israel, they were literally uh, 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 bringing down oppression on the fatherless, on the orphans, on the widows. They were taking uh, uh, advantage of them. So Isaiah says, correct these things. But most importantly, he says, learn to do good. How is it, brothers and sisters in Christ, that we can learn to do Good. What? Huh. That seems simple, doesn't it? That's got to be too simple, Justice. I'm sorry. Let's make this far more common. Let's make this like a a calculus class. So none of us can understand it, except you. Well, maybe some of you others know calculus, but I certainly don't. No, it's just that simple. The Word of the Lord teaches us how to do good. And not just do nice things. That's a good thing. Nothing wrong with that. But to literally live our lives in the Word of the Lord. To literally live out the Gospel. Paul illustrates it so marvelously. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, patience, a gentleness, self-control. Against these things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. So in the Word of the Lord, in the Word, 
that comes to us in the sacraments, in the Word proclaimed and read and studied, that is where we learn how to stop following those things of the world and instead engage, be led by the Spirit. Did you catch that? Under whose power can you do good? God's. Nice. Extra credit points in religion class, my friend. He needs it. <laughs> Just Miss Angie's. I'm an easy grader. Sorry. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, it's not even under our own power. It's, it's God's Spirit working in that Word working in those sacraments and through his word, through his sacraments, in each one of us. Can I, apart from my faith in Christ, can I ever stop doing evil? No. Apart from my faith in Christ, Paul says, all my, or Jesus says, all my good deeds are as filthy rags. But in Christ, in Christ, by the power of God's Spirit, I can live my life according to the Spirit. Those urgings which the Spirit bring me along to do. Again, will I always cease to do evil? Will I always stop? No. No. But when I do fail to stop, I don't have to keep going. I don't have to dig myself a hole and then just dwell in the muck and the mire. Because there is the Lord who says, yes, you have sinned. You are weak and heavy laden. Come, and I will give you rest. Because he has already taken that heavy burden of sin off of us, and he put it on us the cross and he reaches down into that hole we've dug and he grabs us and he pulls us out once again wash new did you catch the end of what isaiah had to say come now let us reason together let us consider this word of the Lord and what it means to me day in and day out. Come, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. You people that don't like snow, come on, right here. It's biblical. <laughs> Though your sins are as scarlet, they will be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. He lifts us out of the muck and the mire when we fail to stop. And we with contrite, heart, contrite hearts are delivered and set again on the solid path of the word of the Lord. No shifting sands. No question whether it's true or not because God has said it, and so it shall be. So let us stop and learn. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard our hearts and our minds, and in through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue now by confessing our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We sing our next hymn as we receive the offering. Oh. 
Pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all people according to their needs. Please stand. O oh, wisdom, proceeding from the mouth of the Most High, pervading and permeating all creation, mightily ordering all things, come and teach us the way of prudence. O oh, Adonai and ruler of the house of Israel, who appeared to Moses in the burning bush and gave him the law on Sinai, come with an outstretched arm and redeem us. O root of Jesse, standing as an ensign before the peoples, before whom all kings are mute, to whom the nations will do homage, come quickly to deliver us. O key of David and scepter of the house of Israel, you open and no one can close, you close and no one can open. Come and rescue the prisoners who are in darkness and the shadow of death. O dayspring, splendor of light everlasting, Come and enlighten those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. O King of the nations, the rule they long for, the cornerstone uniting all people, come and save us all whom you formed out of clay. Lord God, you have called us your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ, our hope, joy, and peace. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Please be seated.
fall. 